Maya Tower didn't start out with a cooking career in mind. In fact, although he'd always liked to cook and to eat well, he trained as an architect. After graduating from Harvard in the early 1970s, he set out to work with Jacques Cousteau in Hawaii. But, lingering in the San Francisco area on his way, he became so intrigued with Alice Waters' fledgling Chez Panisse restaurant in Berkeley that he took a job there. It was he who introduced their California regional dinners, which became so hugely successful that they gave him, Alice Waters, and Chez Panisse a national reputation. On the 4th of July, 1984, Jeremiah opened his own restaurant, Stars, in San Francisco. It, too, became and has remained a huge success. Today, Chef Jeremiah is generally acclaimed as glamorous master chef, great restaurateur, successful author and teacher, and with Alice Waters, he stands at the forefront of the fresh food philosophy movement. We spent the day together in a spectacular house overlooking San Francisco Bay, where he was intent on ways to cook chicken. There are chickens everywhere in America, and I'm going to show a few reasons and a few choices that I've made and a few simple ways to cook the chicken. And simple is sometimes all you need to do. Olive oil or butter, fresh lemons and fresh herbs. Here we have sage, rosemary, fresh thyme, and tarragon. And here are the choices. A poussin, or small chicken, this is about three and a half weeks old. And if you can't find that in the market, you can always get a Cornish game hen. It's a little bit bigger, but actually this is about three and a half weeks old as well. Then there's the fryer, which is a little, uh, as you can see, bigger and older. This is about seven and a half weeks old. Then the big roasting chicken, that's about ten and a half weeks old. And then the stewing fowl, or boiling hen, which is 15 to 20 weeks old. Don't forget, of course, that you have to wash chickens before you cook them. And also, after I wash them and dry them, I usually squeeze uh, fresh lemon juice all over them for flavor and also for cleanliness. And first, I would like to show you how to prepare the poussin for grilling and for marinating. Before grilling the poussin, I want to flatten it out so that it cooks evenly. And to do that, I turn the bird over, take my poultry shears. I'm going to cut the back bone out. Start on one side, cut down to the neck, all the way down to the front. And then on the other side, do the same thing. Right through the joint, right along the back. And you can just lift out the backbone, trim it a bit, save that for stock for later. Then I'm going to turn the bird over, and give it a good whack like that so that it flattens it out. Now I just have to deal with the wings and the legs so that they're held in tightly and don't flop around when you're cooking. So I'm just going to truss those under, just bend them right under the chicken like that. Then for the legs, I'm going to cut a slit in the back of the skin here and put the ends of the legs through it. So just cut that. your finger through, make sure there's enough room. So you're going to make it a little bit bigger. Then just take the end of the leg, like that, and push it through the hole. Then take the other one and do the same thing. There we go. Then just flatten it again, like that, and push it into shape. I'm going to marinate the poussin in a little bit of olive oil and fresh thyme. Leave the fresh thyme whole because you want to scrape that off the poussin before you grill it and probably throw the thyme on the fire to make a wonderful flavored smoke. So you put the poussin in the dish, moisten it, rub the thyme in and the olive oil, and leave that for an hour before you grill it. I have some of the poussin that have been sitting here for an hour marinating, and now I have to season because we're about to grill. So just take a little bit of salt and pepper and sprinkle it over the chicken on both sides. And then use the pepper as well. That's freshly ground pepper. You can use a pepper mill. 
I just ground some before and put it in the dish. There we go. Now we're ready to go to the grill. Now it's time to grill the poussin. And I've built a nice big fire and you wait until the coals have died down just to the point where they have an even white ash all over them. I'm going to cook the poussin first breast side down on the fire because I just want to seize them up a little bit, start the cooking on the breast and then turn them over so that most of the cooking occurs on this side, the, the bone side, so that it doesn't dry out the breast meat. You're going to cook those about five minutes on the breast, turn them over about another ten minutes on the bone side and five minutes before the poussin are cooked Take the thyme that's been marinating with the little birds and throw it on the fire and you get a wonderful flavor from the aromatic smoke. With the grilled poussin, I'm going to serve a warm vegetable salad and the vegetables are dressed in a tomato vinaigrette which has some salt and freshly ground pepper because that has the best flavor and perfume and then lemon juice freshly chopped shallots and chop them just before you need them so they stay nice and fresh. Don't get that old onion taste. Freshly chopped fresh herbs and those can be any of the uh, soft leaf variety like basil and marjoram, tarragon, whatever you've got. And then the chopped up seeded and skinned tomatoes and olive oil. You know this is a wonderful dressing. It's so simple. It, to make it only takes the time it takes to uh, have a couple of glasses of wine when you get home. It's perfect on pasta, on grilled fish, even on a slice of toasted or grilled bread. It's absolutely wonderful. Now I'm going to take the vegetables that have been cooking in salted water for just a few minutes and drain them. Now we're just going to put the, the vegetables into the vinaigrette and toss those together with all the wonderful aroma of the fresh herbs and olive oil. May have to add a little bit more freshly cracked pepper on top for the perfume of that. This is also wonderful as I said before you can put this whole mixture now with the vegetables on pasta or just serve it as it is. This time we're going to add them to the platter with the poussin. Good, and then I'll just take some of the juices and put those around the platter. Some of it on the, on the poussin. The olive oil and the juices from the vegetables. And of course, don't forget to wipe the platter. And you know what I really love about this dish are the pure, clean, simple flavors of the grilled chicken and the fresh herbs and the olive oil. It really is a wonderful dish for a summer lunch or a picnic, wherever you are. Certainly one of the most convivial ways to cook is on the outdoor barbecue and those little butterfly chickens are perfect food for the grill or in the oven broiler for that matter. Next, Jeremiah will show us one of the easiest ways to cook a chicken, poaching, slowly simmering it in seasoned liquid until it's done. Jeremiah pokes a stuffing of bacon and mushrooms under the skin of his chicken before poaching it and serves it with a garnish of fresh baby vegetables. Another way to cook chicken is to poach it. And I'm going to use the boiling hen or the stewing fowl because in the long time it takes to poach, it picks up all the flavors from the vegetables and the broth and the fresh herbs that I'll poach it with. And now I'm making the uh, stuffing with the chopped up smoky bacon, which I'm going to put in with the chopped up mushrooms. To that I'm going to add some of the other half of the bacon, which I've ground up in a food processor into a paste so that it holds the stuffing together binds it together, then the chopped up tarragon, mix that together, 
I'm going to add some salt and pepper, but be careful about the salt content because the bacon is already fairly salty. A little pepper first and a couple of pinches of salt. Now I'm just going to mix that together. Good. Now I'm going to stuff the chicken. In this case, I'm not going to stuff it in the cavity, but I'm going to stuff the mushrooms and bacon under the skin. That way it'll keep the breast very moist and all the flavor will poach down throughout the chicken. So what you do, you separate the skin from the breast by pushing your hand down like that, just loosening it up a little bit, and take your finger and go around over the top of the drumstick because you want to put some stuffing there as well for flavor. Now we just do the same thing on the other side, loosen the skin like that, like putting on a glove. Put your finger around on the other side and loosen the skin over the drumstick again. Then when the skin is fully loose, you can see that, you take some of the stuffing, make sort of a sausage shape like that, pick it up, and just gently push it down like that under the skin and flatten it out so it covers the whole side of both sides of the breast. Flatten it out so it's evenly distributed. Now this stuffing I'm going to put in there and then just move around over the leg. There it is on both sides. Good. Now I think we're ready to Wrap it in cheesecloth. The cheesecloth is sort of like a trussing system. It'll hold the chicken together as it poaches so that the wings and things like that don't separate from the chicken. Just pick it up. And fold the cheesecloth. Slide it down a bit, pull the cheese cloth over it, put it all towards the back, give it a twist like that so it tightens it up, and just take a piece of string. This is when you wish you had another hand. And after you tied it, leave the handle like this of the cheese cloth because it makes it very easy to pull out of the pot after it's finished cooking. But now it needs to sit for about an hour to marinate, let all the flavors develop before it goes into the pot. We're going to poach the chicken in water, which we want to flavor with these herbs and the vegetables. But I'm going to make what we call a bouquet garni by putting down some tops of the leek leaves like this, the celery tops, fresh thyme, three or four, bay leaf, these are dried bay leaf. And I'm just saved one leek top like that to finish out the bundle. Wrap it all up. And tie it tightly like that in a neat little bundle. If you can tie it with only two hands, there we go. And that's the bouquet gunny, which I'm going to put in the water with the chicken. There it goes in the pot. Now we take the chicken, which has been marinating for an hour, sitting there with all the flavors developing from the mushrooms and the bacon and put it right in the cold water. Then we add the chopped up carrots, all of them, and the onions, and the celery. And we just push those down like that, mix it all up. And after the celery, we add some salt enough to make the water just a little bit salty. And then cover the pot, bring it up to a very gentle simmer and simmer it for about three hours until it's tender. After about three hours or when the chicken is tender, take it out of the poaching liquid using that tail that we left on the cheesecloth and also with a carving fork, you can just stick it through that thick part of the cheesecloth and lift up the chicken, drain it for a little bit and then put it right onto its platter, like that. Now I'm going to drain 
the poaching liquid and get rid of the vegetables that have been cooking in there for three hours. All their flavor and goodness has gone into the broth because we're going to replace these vegetables with new ones that will be garnished and accompany the uh, poached chicken. To do that, we move the broth over. And now I'm just going to add the vegetables and put them in all together. Little potatoes, turnips, mushrooms, the uh, carrots, which I had soaking in water, so I'll just lift those out. I don't want to dilute the broth any. And the leeks, which we've trimmed and cut in half. Now those vegetables are ready to poach, and we can go ahead and take the cheesecloth off the chicken after it's sat for about 20 minutes. And a few minutes before the vegetables are cooked, just add some more fresh herbs. The tarragon and thyme gives a wonderful fresh flavor to the broth. You only want to cook it for a couple of minutes in there. While we're waiting for that, I'm going to take the cheesecloth off the chicken, just cut down from back to front like that. Cut through the back part here. Because you just want to take the cheesecloth off on the sides like that, watching for any pieces that are left over, and get rid of the cheesecloth. Now we're ready to garnish the plate with the vegetables that have been cooking in the broth. And you put them around the platter. Tarragon's been cooking long enough, and I'm just going to use that to decorate the top of the, uh, the bird for the moment for presenting at the table. Okay. All these wonderful aromatic vegetables, the turnips and carrots and leeks that have been cooking in this rich chicken broth. Whoops, they're hot. And just before you take the chicken to the table, spoon a little of the hot, fragrant, aromatic broth over the chicken and over the vegetables. Keeps everything hot and glistening. That's a lovely dish. If you're on a diet, you could be picky and omit the bacon. But most of its fat has been rendered out anyway. And besides, you need some fat in your diet or your body can't process your vitamins. Coming up next, the real test of a good chef is a perfectly roasted chicken. Let's see how Jeremiah scores with his. Few things are more wonderful than a perfectly roasted chicken, but the challenge is to get the moist meat, crisp skin, and the breast and the legs all cooked at the same time. And that's what we're going to do. Take out the fat from the cavity and put that aside. Now I'm going to season the cavity with salt and pepper. Put in a few of the garlic cloves that have been actually unpeeled. There's a lot of flavor in the skin. They don't have to be peeled. Take some lemon, squeeze that inside and rub it around and put the lemon inside. Actually, I think I'll put a couple inside. And then I'm going to Truss the chicken. Take about a three foot long piece of string and lift it up around the front of the breast like that, down around each of the wings. There are many ways to truss a chicken, but this one's very easy and works. Then bring it around under the legs like that, cross it over, and then just tie up very neatly the legs there under the breast and just do a knot. And I'll trim off the ends of the string. That's perfectly trussed. Now I'm going to, before I put it in the uh, casserole, put in half the garlic in the bottom like that and half of the fresh rosemary. I'll sort of mash that up a bit to get all the flavors started. 
Then I'm going to rub some of the lemon and lemon juice over the chicken all the way around it and put that lemon in the pot. We're going to put some more. Then just a little bit of olive oil for flavor and to keep the skin nice and moist when it first starts to cook. Then the chicken fat that you've kept on the side, just flatten it out, pound it out a little bit with your fists and put it on the breast of the chicken like that. It keeps it a lot of flavor and also helps to keep it moist. Then I'm going to put that, the chicken in the casserole. And remember, for the board and for your hands, that you have to wash everything very, very thoroughly when you're finished. Now I can just put the rest of the rosemary in here and the garlic cloves, scatter them around, a couple over the chicken, last one. I take some more of the lemons, squeeze them over the chicken and put them in the casserole as well because that wonderful aroma, there's something really magic about garlic, rosemary and lemon. Just a last little bit of salt over the top of the chicken and then it's ready to go in the oven. Again, the secret here is to cover the chicken in the beginning, in the first part of the cooking and uncover it at the last to crisp the skin. So I'm going to put it in the oven now. The reason this chicken looks so golden brown and delicious is because I took the cover off the casserole for about the last 15 minutes of cooking. Now to carve it, I have to take the trussing string off, like that, wind it around from under the, the legs and throw the string away. Now I'm going to carve some pieces off the breast, getting that wonderful crisp skin first. And I'm placing these slices of the breast on the watercress, which I've dressed in some of the garlic that I cooked with the chicken pureed, with the, mixed that with the chicken juices, some walnut oil, salt and pepper. A little bit more of the breast. Then I would take the garlic, the crisp garlic that was cooked in the casserole with the chicken and scatter those around on the top and a few on the plate like this. These are absolutely wonderful and you squeeze them out over the salad and over the chicken. And don't forget, of course, those wonderful roasting juices which have been defatted and heated up and served for the sauce. What a beautifully roasted chicken and all those heavenly aromas, the lemons, the garlic, the rosemary. What a treat. Bring on the roasted potatoes. Bring on the mohache. This is Julia Child for Cooking with Master Chefs. Bon appétit. Bon appétit!